Our scripture reading comes from St. Matthew, chapter 24, reading verses 32 and 33. St. Matthew, chapter 24, 32 and 33. Please stand while I read in your hearing. begin. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. May the Lord grant us understanding as we read his holy words. Father, creator of heaven and earth, we gather together once more in this your sanctuary, on this your holy day of rest, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We come, Lord in no other name but in the name of Jesus. That there is healing in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. We come, dear Lord, with our different needs and desires. We ask, Lord, that you may be with every worshiper today. May you cleanse us from everything that is unlike you. We had at this time, Lord, that where there is need for healing, dear Lord, may you administer according to your will. We had, Lord, that you may be with those who are grieving even now members of those families who have lost loved ones ask that you may be their chief comforter be with our visitors in a special way each one lord that has entered this your temple today may they leave today lord rejoicing and with a special blessing 
to share as they go on their merry way and to come back again, Lord, to give you the thanks and the praise. We ask, Lord, that you may be with our members, children, adults, females, males, even the little babies, Lord, who have come in today. We now seek your Holy Spirit, Lord, presence to be with each worshiper. We need you, Lord, more than ever. We ask now, Lord, that your sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, may just over, over each worshiper today. And may, Lord, we know that you are a God, a God of love, a God of forgiveness. May we, Lord, just empty everything that is unlike you right here today, so that we may be filled, Lord, with that blessings which you have prepared for us. Be, Lord, with those who are sick, those who might be here, those who are in their homes, those who might have been hospitalized. Be with our shut-ins. Be with this community of Port Antonio, O oh Lord. We ask that, Lord, that this church will continue to be a beacon to speak and to point out sin in the lives of men so that they too may come and run and accept thee before it is eternally too late. We ask, Lord, that you may be with our youth in a special way. Each one, their father, tend unto them. Let them know, Lord, that you are their friend. And, Lord, they can call on you anytime, anywhere, Lord, because you are there for them. Grant them the strength. Empower them, dear Lord, morally, dear Lord, so that they may do the things that are right and pleasing in your sight and be examples, Lord, to their peers and to others. Be with our speaker in a special way, our host, Pastor, Pastor Manderson. We ask that he may be with the message, Lord, that you have, you have sent him for, to give him and to give us that special message, that special word coming straight from your throne. Lord, we are not here for show. We are here, Lord, because we need you. Lord, just sanctify us, God, and help us to be a people, Lord, that can show forth the praises of him who have called us out of darkness into this, your marvelous light. We ask your sweet Holy Spirit now, Lord, to take charge, to take over. May your sweet Holy Spirit again, Lord, touch your manservant in a marked way. And may, Lord, we yield to the corrections, to the instructions, dear Father, that will be given in righteousness. Fill each heart now with your presence and with an anointing, Lord, as we wait upon you. These we ask in no other name but in the wonderful and the precious name of Jesus.
Happy Sabbath, brethren. God has been very good to us. Do you agree? That is why I can be here at this time, looking in your smiling faces. Now, once again, we have a privilege to hear this spoken word from the servant of God, in the person of Pastor Garfield Mandison. Pastor Mandison has committed himself to work for God. He is the host pastor for this church, but he also wears several hats. He is here today with his family, his wife, Sister Anne Marie Mandison, and daughter Mahalia Mandison. For those who do not know them, I'm going to ask them to stand and give the congregation a wave. Now, Pastor Mandison has a message for us today. And I'm going to be asking you to breathe a word of prayer as you listen. Breathe a word of prayer for him, for the brethren, and for yourself. Before he comes, however, the, our youth group is going to bless us with the song of meditation. Thank you. Not by 
Thank you kindly, Sister Laws, for your kind introduction, and my thanks to the youth group who have sung so professionally. The two songs you did were very, very well done, and God is very particular about good music. We must be careful how we praise God. We must give him the best, what do you say? And we thank that group, you did very well. Happy Sabbath everybody. And welcome to church this morning. I trust you had a good week. You are looking very good, certainly from where I stand. And it tells me that God is very, very good to his people. I want to apologize for last week. Last week's Sabbath, we were at the Glen Devon Church in Montego Bay, and they actually sent back their greetings to you. Uh, the word never get to the elder in time, and so I want to apologize for that, and I want to thank Elder Gooden for standing in the gap for me, so that uh, where I was absent, he was present last week. Also, Elder Panton uh, should be here this morning, but I ask him to stand in Berrydale, and so I hope to make up for the time lost uh, last week. The administration of Northeast Jamaica Conference asks me to remind the church to pray for the upcoming conference session. You are aware that our conference session begins uh, uh, not this Monday, the following Monday, that's the 20th and the 21st of August, and we solicit your prayers that God will truly uh, lead in the transition of officers uh, for the, to serve for the next quadrennium. And so we ask for your prayers. We uh, will be having, I think, the graduation at NCU and a uh, number of our persons from this constituent are graduating. We ask for your prayers for them as well. And so it's good to be here this morning. We trust that as we share the word of God together, you will be blessed abundantly. I want to read for you Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 to 33. 
Matthew 24, verse 32 to 33. I'll read in your hearing. It says, Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. May we bow our heads together as we pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, I humble myself before you this morning and acknowledge you as the great God who inhabits eternity. I ask that you will touch my lips today as I seek to present this message of hope and courage to your children. So many of us have been forlorn and disappointed, discouraged. We pray that you will encourage our hearts today with a word directly from your throne. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Close biblical observation reveals that the first coming of Jesus to this earth is the greatest evidence that his second coming is also sure. For before his first coming, patriarchs and prophets alike had declared for hundreds of years the coming of Christ the Messiah, who would bruise the head of the serpent. And so the Lord, many years after the flood, chose a man by the name of Abraham. And he chose him from Har of the Chaldees and gave him a divine charter. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, he said, Get out of your country. Go away from your family to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation. Through you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And so we know then from Scripture that Messiah would come through the seed of Abraham. In Genesis chapter 18, God promised Abraham a son, and in many ways, this son symbolically pointed to Jesus, the Messiah. You remember in Genesis 22, God tested Abraham. He said, take now thy son, and the Bible was very specific about this, take now thy son, thy one and only child, and offer him on Mount Moriah as a sacrifice. Well, that's a very, very strange command. And it's strange because in those days they were the pagans who were sacrificing their children. And God was very specific to Moses. He said, don't let any of you cause his son or daughter to pass through the fire. It was a strange command. And while there is no evidence in the scripture, I am sure that Abraham did not tell Sarah of this strange command because whether it came from God or not, she would not allow it. But Abraham knew the voice of God. And that's important. What was important to this patriarch was that he trusted God. That's the question. Was he prepared to trust God? 
So he said, the Lord will provide. And so, as he was there pondering what to do, maybe he tied the young man up and he raised the knife to take the jugular. The angel of God shouted and said, Abraham, Lay not thy hand on the lad, because now I know that the fear God. That's a man of faith, you would say. That's great faith, what do you say? And then, of course, there was the lamb caught in the thicket. But we are now confronted with a man who is full of years, full of tragedy, caprice, and adventure. He began by stealing his brother's birthright and then he ran to the land of Mesopotamia and the unforgettable experience of wrestling with the angel of God at the banks of the river Jabbok. I am sure his grandchildren would ask him from time to time to tell them the story of how he wrestled with the angel at the river Jabbok. But Jacob is now old and retired. He is full of years. His faith in God and his trust in his creator solid as a rock. As he lay on his dying bed, the promise of the Messiah was expressed in these words. The scepter shall not depart from Judah or a lawgiver between his feet until Shiloh comes. And Shiloh in the Hebrew means peace. It means assurance. It means comforter. And Jacob was very specific. He said, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until in essence Jesus comes. Isaiah prophesied that the Savior would come as a male child and would be both human and divine. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7, you can write it down, read it when you go home. The scripture says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his what? His shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Those titles are only given to divinity. What do you say? Micah chapter 5 verse 2, Bethlehem would be his birthplace. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says, A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shall call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Now let me challenge you, brothers and sisters. Many of you came to Christ because of Pastor Manderson's preaching, and he told you about Jesus and the importance of surrendering your life to Jesus. But it is more important for you to know this Jesus for yourself. And you know him by studying the scriptures, looking at the prophecies of Isaiah, comparing them with Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, and coming to the conclusion for your own self that Jesus is in fact the Messiah. And when you can do that, he will be more precious to you. What do you say? His mission is further expressed in Isaiah 61 verse 1 as he said, The Spirit of the Lord is up in me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prison to them that are bound, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah prophesied that. But amazingly, my brothers and sisters, the Messiah would suffer rejection. He would be treated, as it were, as a root out of a dry ground. Thank you, Doc. He has no form or comeliness. 
And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, the Bible said, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Had Jesus come as a king, has he been accorded the popular titles of the day and was popular among men? Thousands would have flocked to him because of his popularity. But alas, the scripture says he has no form or comeliness. There is no beauty that we should desire him. Every facet of his ministry was predicted and fulfilled to the very letter. In fact, the seer of Babylon, that nobleman of God called Daniel, five centuries before the coming of Messiah, predicted with empirical decision, precision, when he would come, how he would come, and how he would die. So my brothers and sisters here at Port Antonio, for millennia, thousands of years, prophets prophesied about him, seers preached about him, pastors pointed to him, the Levitical system revolved around him through their ceremonies pointed to him, as a matter of fact, Abraham was called from his home to go into a strange land to facilitate his coming. And whole nations went into captivity to make way for the Messiah. But alas, my brothers and sisters, when he came, nobody even noticed that the greatest prophecy of all times were fulfilled, was fulfilled. Men were busy with their ceremonies, busy making more money, busy with the earthly and the transient things of this life, but totally unaware that he who was to come had come. The Almighty God was in their midst. The Son of God had divested his divinity and was now in a manger in swaddling clothes. His innocent cooing was not even appreciated and known by those who should know. Where were the leaders of the nation? Where were the scribes and Pharisees which should be looking for his coming? Sadly, he came to his own. And his own received him not. As soon as Jesus the Messiah was born, Satan devised a deadly plan to snuff out the life of Jesus Christ. Just to make sure that the Son of Man was killed, the Bible says that hundreds of innocent babies, male babies, were slain without mercy. The Bible describes it. There was lamentation and weeping and woe. The women were weeping for their children and could not be comforted because their children were dead. And you don't want to hear the scream of a woman who has lost a child. I was watching an advertisement. It was something that was orchestrated. The little boy was crying for the mother. And the mother said, Miss Soon come. Then she went and he touched the electrical wire. And he let, she let out a scream that moved my belly. No, that was just orchestrated. It was something that was, uh, uh, you know, was mechanical. But just imagine when a mother lost her one and only child, a male child, the Bible said, Elder, there was weeping and lamentation and woe because the children were not. I want you to know that we are up against a wily foe. It is the true character of Satan. 
He is ruthless and sadistic and immoral and uh, he takes satanic delight in war and disappointment and discouragement because when he discourages God's people and God is sad, Satan is glad. It makes him happy to see God's children discouraged. It came up to the point when Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan. And Satan listened to the voice of John. And let me tell you something. If ever there was a man who was filled with the Spirit of God, it was John. John never had to come to the city to preach. All he did was to stand somewhere in the wilderness, in the remotest parts of the wilderness, and he lifted up his voice like a trumpet. And people from all over came to see this man. And when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Son of God, which takes away the sins of the world. As he saw the Spirit of God descending upon the Son of God, and as he heard the voice of God saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. It was a heavenly approbation. There was an earthly approbation from John. There is the heavenly approbation from God Almighty. There was the Spirit of God descending like a dove on the Son of God. And Satan was there watching that. And as he saw those manifestations, he became even more determined to destroy the plan of salvation. Satan followed Jesus into the wilderness. I want you to follow the steps of this Galilean. I want you to fall in love with Jesus. I don't just want you to know about him. I want you to know him as a friend. What do you say? So Satan followed him into the wilderness. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, I tried to fast for two days one time and I got sick. Tried it again, got sick. I can do it about one day, maybe one day and a half. But this man fasted for 40 days, Sister Benton, and 40 nights. And after he was through fasting, the tempter came to him. Note that while he was fasting, the devil had to stay at bay. While he was connected with heaven, the devil had to stay at bay. But as soon as he had through fasting, my brothers and sisters, the tempter came to him. And I want to admonish my brothers and sisters. It is time to pray. It is time to pray. And I'm not just talking about your ordinary prayer. There are some times in the nights, I was telling the brethren on Wednesday night right here, that you must get up in the midst of the night. You must repair to your war room and you must cry out to God. You must present your family before Jesus. You must present the church before Jesus because true, when the saints begin to pray, then the Lord will have his way. So he was fasting and praying. The 40 days and 40 nights. And then the tempter came to him. He said, if you are the son of God. Note it. If you are. If this was a true seraph or cherub, he would know that this is the son of God. But the devil essayed to question the divinity of Jesus. He was there when the morning stars sang for joy. He was there, my brothers and sisters, when God brought this world into out of nothing, into something. But now this cherub was questioning the divinity of Jesus. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. And Jesus was hungry. But he said these words, and we must never forget them. Man should not live by what? Bread alone, but by every word which proceeded out of the mouth of God. Bread is important. Food is important. 
but not nearly as important as eating and digesting spiritually the word of God. Wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? By taking heed according to thy word. As newborn babes, Peter said, desire the, the, the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. What do you say? called me from Dover last week said pastor we want you to come and help us to study the prophecies and understand the prophecies we hear that something great is happening in Port Antonio thank God for pastor not and so this evening I'll be going down there and I'll be opening the scriptures to the church for it is a time to go back to God's word. It is time to go back to the scripture and to study the prophecy because great mirth and death and destruction is coming upon the church of the living God and only those who have fortified ourselves with the word of God shall be able to stand. The Bible said he took Jesus to a high mountain where he could see the kingdoms of this world. You hear me? The kingdoms of this world. And he had the presumption to ask him to bow down to him. He showed him Amsterdam. He showed him Glasgow. Beautiful place. Reykjavik. One of the most beautiful towns in this world. There's a, a city called Reykjavik. The capital of Iceland, just about two hours from Scotland. Greenland. When you look at these places, you can understand why the Jehovah Witnesses say that God is not going to destroy this beautiful world, but he's going to destroy it and prepare something better. What do you say? He showed him New York, London. All these beautiful places perish. And he said, all this I will give to you. I will make you a vassal king. That's what Satan was really saying. You will be subservient to me, but I will give it to you. I will give it to you. But how absurd it is, my brothers and sisters, how ludicrous it is, because how can you give somebody something that does not belong to you? God is in charge of this world. But more than that, Satan was going too far. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, for you shall worship the Lord thy God and him only. Let me tell you something. God is particular about worship. And the whole problems and challenges in this world, the great controversy revolves around worship because God is particular about how he is worshipped and when he is worshipped and where he is worshipped. But Christ met Satan with a plain, it is written, it is written. And I submit to you today that no other weapon is powerful and potent enough to combat the enemy. We will only overcome the devil by the word of our testimony and by the word of the living God. What do you say? We need to study the word of God. We need to study the word of God. And so Satan left him for a while, the scripture says. But he met him at Calvary. He met him at Calvary. And let me tell you something. It was the darkest day in the history of this world. To the point where the sun refused to look at the scene. Where the disciples ran away because their master, their Lord, their champion was now hanging between heaven and earth as the dark forces of this world nailed the Son of God, took his right hand and his left hand and his feet that went on so many missions of mercy, the hands that healed the sick and claim the leper and the voice that caused demons to flee was now silent on the cross. 
And for the first time, it would seem as though God has lost, has lost the battle. But you see, when I study the vicissitudes of divinity, when you go down into the character of God, you begin to understand that God does not think like human think. What do you say? God would use a cross to destroy the devil, to destroy the powers of darkness. He would be hung on the cross in death, but by his death we would have life. What do you say? battered and bruised and beautiful face covered with the filthy sputum of men. But the scripture says by his stripes we are healed. I love Jesus. The song says tell me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious. Sweetest than ever was heard. Jesus was taken from the cross, placed in the tomb, incarcerated, my brothers and sisters. But Gabriel, the son of God, the trade cherub, whether he's a cherubim or a seraphim, I don't know. Maybe he's a cherub because we read in inspiration that he was one of those who stood at the entrance to the Shekinah and Satan would know who he is. I don't know, my friends. We know that Gabriel is one of those cherubs and that Satan is more powerful than Gabriel. You didn't know that. When you read the book of Daniel, Satan withstood Gabriel for some 21 days. Gabriel had to appeal to Michael. Jesus Christ had to come to his aid. But this time when Gabriel descended from the portals of glory, he was coming with anger. He was coming with anger my brothers and sisters because he saw what the devil had done to Jesus and when he came down and he touched down the devil had to run like a thief you can beat a man that is stronger than you if you are sufficiently angry and Gabriel was angry at the devil because of what he had done to Michael the prince of peace He walked over to the coffin elder, to the tomb, rolled away the stone, lifted his hands to heaven, and cried, Son of God, come forth! Thy father called thee, what do you say? And Jesus Christ, my friend, your friend, the prince of peace, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the great physician, the alpha and omega, got up, and when he got up, he cried, I am he that was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of heaven in 80s. And I thank God for that. My brothers and sisters, the human race needed that example. Needed that example. Jesus Christ is my great exemplar. Are we together? We needed that example. You would say, Pastor Manders is a good man, but my example is not enough. You would say, our president is a good man, but his example is not enough. The world has been blessed with great men. John Wycliffe, John Hus, Moses and Abraham. And all these great patriarchs and prophets of old, their example is not good enough. Jesus Christ is my exemplar. The human race needed that. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, We have not an eye priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was tempted in what? In all points, just as we are yet without sin. Jesus knows what you're going through. He knows. I can tell you that. 
You know, the other day I went to pray. These days, I find myself just praying. Can't sleep at night. Wake up in the morning, go down to the vestry, and I would just pray, just praying. And I want you to join me praying, you know. In the realm of the Spirit, something is coming. Something is happening in the dark places of this world, and it is coming upon the church like a whirlwind, and it is time for us to humble our hearts before God. And to intercede with him. Not about yourself. Or worry about what people has done to you. They did that to Jesus. And he just looked to his father. It is time for God's church to pray. So you know what I said to Jesus? I said to him, Lord, I can't fight anymore. I have fought enough. I have prayed until sometimes my cogitation is like confusion. So I'm asking you just to take over and fight for me. Just fight for me. And sometimes we need to do that. Just surrender to Jesus and allow him to fight your battles for you. What do you say? Because he is touched with the feelings of your infirmity. Let me tell you something. When God fight your battles for you, you have a sure win. What do you say? You are sure to win. Jesus revealed the character of God. He showed us what God is like. Before sin came, Satan represented God as a tyrant. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent his son. And when the angels of God saw what Satan was doing to Jesus, when they saw his face covered with the spit of men and his head bleeding from the thorns that were placed there, when he fainted under the weight of the cross, when the nails were driven in his hands, and when they hung him between heaven and earth, the angels witnessed that. The unfallen worlds witness that. And let me tell you something, Pastor Not uh, explain something to us. There are principalities and powers in heaven. There are kings there. There are princes there. There are great men there. There are unfathomable mysteries there, my brothers and sisters. And they were able to witness what Satan did to Jesus Christ. I imagine even the fallen angels, when they saw what the devil was doing to Jesus, they had a greater respect for him. You know, not so much, my brothers and sisters, but the respect that the dons get from their don donners and other inferiors. The other reason why Christ came to die, he came to provide a righteousness for man that God could respect. And I thank God for that. Let me tell you something, friends. None of your goodness can stand before God. No amount of goods that you have given to the poor. Nothing that you do can commend you to God Almighty. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do good. You should do all the good you can to all the people you can while you can. But the outcome of your goodness should be because of the good God inside of you. And when you give, don't boast about it. Don't desire praise for it. You should humble yourself before God and say, thank you, Jesus, that you have the privilege to give. It gets me upset sometimes. Oh, Scotiabank, not Scotiabank, NCB called me one year. I think it was last year or the year before. And they gave me $100,000 for the church. But... I had to go on the TV and they had to put me up on their 
that they gave a hundred thousand dollars to the church when you give don't sound a trumpet and let everybody know what you have done when you do it in silence like the woman who didn't have much to give but she just gave a coin it is more acceptable to God because you're given out of the goodness of your heart and not for the approbation and praise of men Because Jesus says that all our righteousness are as what? As filthy rags. Filthy rags. It is only his righteousness which suffices for us. What do you say? He covers us with his goodness. He covers us with his love. The song says his banner over us is love, my friend. And when you look into the character of Jesus, you understand how much he loves us. Loves us to the point where he died on the cross for us. Finally, God came to this world in Christ to show us how to overcome. How we must overcome. Jesus Christ said at the end of his ministry, the prince of this world cometh and he has nothing in me. There is nothing in him that responded to the subtleties of Satan. I reminded you earlier that when he said, bow down to me, Jesus says you should worship the Lord God and him only shall those serve. What do you say? There was nothing in Christ that responded to the subtleties of the devil. He overcame the conflict with Satan by the word of God. But as I close this message, and I hope you were blessed today and that you're closer drawn to Jesus, I want you to know that Satan is doing everything to destroy you. Are you listening to me? The devil is doing everything to break up your family. to bring chaos and disappointment and disunity in the church. And let me tell you something. The devil is not as disorganized as we are. You are talking about forces that are super intelligent. And you there reading your Bible, he says to his host of hell, I am going to get that rascal tonight. He has redoubled his efforts. And I want you to know that he is pressing the battle sore on every side. Oh, sad that millions today are standing on the banner of the Prince of Darkness or the Prince of Peace. A lady named Rihanna. Is it Rihanna or Rihanna? I don't know came to Barbados the other day and you know that she's a worshiper of Lucifer and she was telling the little children that oh little ones I know that you pray for Jesus I know that you pray to Jesus but sometimes you should pray to Lucifer and anyone who answers your prayer that's the one you should serve and they had to cut her off right there That's where it is. Pressing the battle sore. The pastor in Glasgow told me, Pastor, this is not a conservative society. You dare not preach about against homosexuals here. You dare not say anything like that because they will close down the meeting. It's a liberal society. It's a postmodern society. What is right for me may be wrong for you, but it is nobody's business but my own. Those are the negative ideals that are taking over our society. And it is coming, my brothers and sisters, to Jamaica, if you are not aware. 
had a discussion with my pastors the other day and they said, Pastor Manderson, if they should legalize homosexuality in Jamaica, what is going to happen to us as marriage officer? I said, well, that's the time you turn in your marriage register. And those are the challenges that you will face. You are going to have to stand on the principles of the word of God. Irrespective of consequences, what do you say? So I want to encourage you today to hold on to Jesus. Oh, my friends, hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. Trials will come. Disappointments will come. Deceptions will come. They will try to shut you up, assassinate your character. But you hold on to Jesus. Hold on to Jesus. You know why we must hold on? Too many of us take our cues from what others say and what others do. Listen to me. Shouldn't matter how you shouldn't worry about whether people praise you or approve you. Just make sure you are doing what God says. Jeremiah stood up and he declared that thus, thus saith the Lord. And they threw him into a pit. Elijah declared, eh, thus saith the Lord. And Jezebel caused him to run into the wilderness. When you stand up for righteousness, you are not just standing up before men, but before the host of the darkness and the forces of hell are against you. But you must stand up. What do you say? Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And having done all to stand, because you're not fighting against human beings, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Pastor, saw his sister going to a certain place in Glasgow. He said, sister, where are you going? She said, I'm going to the shrink, pastor. I'm going to the shrink. And she was happy about it. She was going to the shrink. You know the shrink is? The shrink is a witch that can read her and tell her her future. It is not only there. I see them advertising it on television. Krishna and all kinds of palm readings and all kinds of evil things are coming in Jamaica. And I keep asking my Myself, is opia still illegal in Jamaica? They are now advertising it. Matter of fact, I heard that there is one in Portland. How are they advertising? These things, my brothers and sisters, the Bible said that these things are an abomination. Unto God, what do you say? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, you must stand, what do you say? You must stand. After all the preaching, touch me that piano. After all the witnessing. After all the godly living, we must be able to stand. What do you say? Jesus is coming. He's coming, my friends. He's coming. 183 years ago, the stars fell from heaven. The great Lisbon earthquake. The great dark day, the moon had the appearance of blood. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, I think, when you, after the tribulation of those days, these things will happen. And then he reminded John in Revelation chapter 6, that at the end of the four horsemen of Revelation chapter 6, there is going to be great tribulation. There is going to be a great earthquake at the end of the 1260 years. That has happened, my friends, and now we look, we are waiting we are earnestly anticipating 
the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What do you say? Revelation 6 verse 14 to 17 says, And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island rolled together, moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain and said, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand? I wrote this song down this morning because I want to recite it for you. And just by chance, if there's anyone here, you have not yet accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have not yet made your calling and election sure. This is the day of victory for you. This is a day of rejoicing for you. You can make your peace with God today by putting away the things of this world they will soon pass away. And to give God total control of your life. He loves you. And he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be saved. The song says there is a great day coming. A great day coming. When the saints and sinners shall be parted right and left. Are you ready for that day come? There's a bright day coming, a bright day coming. But its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for that day to come? There's a sad day coming, a sad day coming, a sad day coming by and by. When the sinner shall have his doom, depart, I know you not. Are you ready for that day to come? I am coming to the cross today. I am poor and weak and blind. If you're here today and you want to say, Pastor Manderson, I'm not yet a Christian. I have not yet given my heart to Jesus. Maybe you're confused mentally. You don't know what to do. You are the one who must come to Jesus. You want to say, pray for me. Will you raise those hands this morning? Not yet a Christian. Not yet baptized. Praise God. The hands are going up. I know there are others here today. If you're here, and you want to say, Pastor, I'm giving my praise God for that hand. I want you to pray for me. I want to give my heart to Jesus. I want to make him my friend. I want Jesus to be with me, to walk with me, to talk with me. I just want him in my soul. And you're here this morning. I'm going to ask you to take a stand for Jesus today. Wherever you are, leave your seat. Come and grab my hand this morning. Take my hand and give your heart to Jesus. Praise God. There might be another this morning. Come. I am coming to the cross. As we sing that song, you have the opportunity. I am coming to the cross. I am poor and weak and blind. I am drowned in all but lost. I shall fall salvation's fan. I am trusting, Lord, in thee. I am trusting, Lord, in thee. O thou Lamb of Calvary, humbly at thy cross I bow. Save me, Jesus, save me now. Long my heart has sighed for thee. There might be another this morning. 
By God's grace, you want to be saved this morning. You want to put the world behind you and embrace the cross of Jesus Christ. Today can be the greatest day of your life. If you come to Jesus, I am trusting, Lord, in Thee, O oh, the Lamb, O oh, the Lamb of Calvary, humbly at Thy cross I bow. Save me, Jesus, save me. Will you stand with me this morning? Here I give my all to thee. And if you're so impressed this morning to be included in this prayer, you want strength for the Christian pathway, you want the Lord to be close to you, just come. Just come to the altar. We want to pray for you. Holy thine. Holy thine forever more. I am trusting, Lord. I am trusting, Lord, in thee. O the Lamb of Calvary, humbly at thy cross I bow. Save me, Jesus, save me now. Jesus comes, he fills my soul. Perfected in him I am. I am every whit made old. Come a little closer. Make way for those at the back. Glory, glory to the I am trusting, Lord, in thee. I am trusting, Lord, in thee. O oh, the Lamb of Calvary, humbly at thy cross I bow. Save me, Jesus, save me now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pause this morning to thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit and for the words of encouragement which came to our hearts today. We thank you for the word of God. We thank you for Jesus who has been such a great and noble exemplar for all of us this morning. We thank you for the blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary. That even sinners like we are today can be cleansed and washed and sanctified by the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you for the work of mediation in the heavenly sanctuary where even now this prayer that ascends to you, you are bringing it to the Father. You are petitioning the Father on our behalf and we thank you, Jesus. Oh God, the winds of the last days are blowing upon this earth. The angels that hold the four winds of strife will not always hold them. And even now we see the loosening of their hands upon this society. The postmodern influences, the wickedness and the evil that is sweeping society. Oh God, sometimes we are overwhelmed. But remind us that your great and mighty arm is able to keep us from falling today. Teach us to trust you. Teach us to humble ourselves before you. Teach us, Lord Jesus, to let you do the fighting for us. For we are weak, but you are strong. And we know that we can trust you. Oh God, remember your church. This is your church. I beg you to blast the forces of evil 
to stop the tongue that speak iniquity, to remove the spirit of gossip, and to let the spirit of God take full control of your people. May sin seem exceedingly sinful to all of us. And may we practice your presence in everything we do. Remove jealousy from this church. Remove evil surmising. Remove the works of iniquity. And let the Spirit of God just sway your people today. Fill our hearts. Fill our minds. And may we be a united force against the forces of darkness. Oh God, I thank you today. I just thank you. I, I just praise your name. I just glorify your name. I just magnify your name today. For you have done it again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Go back to your seats. God bless you. message. We'll sing number 600 to close. We'll sing the first and the last stanza. Hold fast till I come. 